Welcome back to PSC Stack Byte. Today I want to talk with you about an Azure service called Azure Key Vault, which is really useful whenever you want to store information in a secure way. In fact, the Azure Key Vault is a storage on the cloud, a secure storage on the cloud, which, for example, from a SharePoint perspective, can be thought as a good replacement in some use cases for the uh, secure store service. It is a service which is based uh, on a set of access control lists that you can find to authorize uh, users or applications to access the secure information that you have inside the key vault. Uh, there is a full logging system to have full control of who is accessing what in the uh, storage, uh, as well as a history of all of the information that you store in the key vault. Uh, from a, a use case perspective, you can think about the uh, Key Vault uh, as the good uh, place to store information like access uh, tokens, uh, refresh tokens, password, connection strings, uh, and all the stuff uh, which needs to be stored uh, in a safe and secure way. From a developer perspective, you can consume the Key Vault uh, from uh, many platforms like .NET Framework, Python, uh, Java, and whatever else more in general as long as you use the REST API provided by the Key Vault. And from a development perspective, if you want to start using the Key Vault, you will first of all need to create a Key Vault service instance. Then you will have to register an application if you want to consume it through an application and you will have to register the application in Azure AD to authorize that application in the access control list of the Key Vault and using the API of your choice you will be able to consume the Key Vault so uh, you will be able to read and write keys and information related to those keys. So let me move to the demo environment as usual and let me show you how to play with it in practice. So here we are in the Azure Management Portal and we are in the Key Vault uh, section. As you can see here, I have already created a Key Vault uh, instance, but you can create your own by clicking the Add button. And this instance uh, is configured in the Access Policies to give access uh, to a Key Vault Demo Consumer application in order to be able to uh, access the uh, keys uh, that we have uh, inside uh, the uh, storage of the Vault. Well, in order to create such an application, you simply need to go to Azure Active Directory under App Registrations, and there you will be able to register a new application like this one, for example, which is the one we will see pretty soon. In the manifest of the application, I decided to store a key credential section in order to be able to access uh, through an app only identity based on an X509 certificate, which will identify my application and uh, I will be able to use this application to access the uh, key vault. So let me switch to Visual Studio and let me show you uh, a sample, really simple console application. This application from a packages perspective, if we go to NuGet, uh, is using uh, ADAL for the uh, authentication uh, part of the story, as well as the Microsoft.Azure.KeyVault uh, uh, package and all of its dependencies to being able to access the uh, key vault. As you can see here, we have ADIL2. So in the application, what we do is simply to get from the uh, certificate store uh, of my machine uh, the X509 certificate that I can use to authenticate against Azure AD. So we simply get a certificate from the store. We create a client assertion certificate uh, uh, through the ADIL library, providing the client ID and the certificate. And then we create a new instance of the Key Vault client type, which is a type provided by the SDK uh, for .NET uh, of the Key Vault. Well, we have an authentication callback method that we can define to get an access token to being able to access the Key Vault. And we have to provide it to the constructor of our Key Vault client. Once we have done that, uh, we can simply add uh, or read uh, keys uh, from the key vault. In order to add a key, we simply create a fake and a dummy uh, global unique identifier as a unique key for our item, for our key that will be stored uh, in the uh, key vault. And in order to add a new item, we simply need to use the create key async method, providing the address uh, of the target vault service, as well as the key for the item that we want to store, and uh, uh, the tags, uh, if any, which will be a set, a dictionary of information that we can store together with the main key, which will identify our information in the vault. 
in order to read back an item we still use the key vault client uh, we use the get key async uh, and as a, again we provide the address of the vault uh, service as well as the key that we want to retrieve we can also make uh, a full uh, retrieval of all of the keys in the storage and uh, some other useful operation but those are the very basic uh, operation that you need to do in order to read uh, update or write an item in the key vault if we run uh, this application with just a control f5 uh, so without debugging the application you will see in the console window that we stored uh, key one value one key two value two in fact uh, from a code perspective we store those information here and we read them back and we go through them with a for each if i go back to the key vault we can see that inside the key vault instance that we have in the keys section we have a couple of items the one we just created and one i created before and if i click on it i can see that this item has an history and in the history we have just one item with two tags and those two tags are the item I created. So key one value one, uh, key two value two. And the same uh, for the other item because those items were uh, created using this application. This one is the one I just created. So that's it, pretty easy. Uh, you can see full logging, you can see full history of the items, you can store safe information. Keep in mind that there are some limit in the number of items that you can store as tags, uh, as well as uh, in the size uh, uh, in of the items that you store here but on average you can store all the most useful information like access token refresh tokens connection strings and all the stuff i told you so pretty easy pretty secure and pretty convenient thanks for watching this video i hope you found it useful and i'm looking forward to seeing you next week thank you